YouTubers, welcome back. Tyler here again today. I have a science experiment for you. Welding, I remember years ago, I made an exhaust for my S10 and it sucked. And I was thinking, now that I have more experience at doing welding that sucks, maybe I can do it that it sucks slightly less. Here is the crappy guinea pig pipe. You can see horrible, a lot of cleanup, still pretty horrible. Started to get slightly better. And here I was able to devise a method that wasn't completely crappy. And that was a light pass to clean up. So I used that method over here in this pipe. And here is the final result. Did have a good bit of cleanup, but I was able to do something that didn't completely blow banana balls. So I'll show you what I'm doing to get this result and maybe to help one of you guys out. Because what does all first time DIY car guys do? They go out and they get a welder that is a flux core because it's cheap. You can get it to your house for a hundred bucks and you can start making exhaust for your low budget hot rod. Let's get to it. Now, this is one thing that I never picked up before because I wasn't going to do exhaust, but I did need something that was going to cut good. And of course, you go to Harbor Freight if you're a budget guy. And I got this, and man, it works way better than trying to cut shit with a grinder. Uh, let's cut it right here. So obviously you want to do some sort of cleanup on it because after you cut it with that big metal monster, it's going to have lots of shit laying around. Cleanliness is next to godliness, right? Whatever. All right, so one of my biggest issues with why this was blowing through and looking like crap is because I had a wire that was too big. So the heat, I had to have the heat way up for it to actually get a good bead but it would blow through the pipe and it would leave way, way more spatter than I really wanted. So what I did, I went out and purchased the one that's in here. So what I'm using is 30 thousands wire. This is Lincoln wire also. They actually make a pretty good wire. I think I've had the best results using Lincoln wire in a Lincoln welder. So whatever, maybe they made it on a better day. And if you want to see my settings, this Lincoln has a little more adjustment than Harbor Freight. Harbor Freight this has, I think, just the wire speed or heat and has, you know, just one switch. This one actually has a high one and two and a low one and two. I'm using low one right in between the five and six. And you always want to use a nice new nozzle I have, I thought this was actually anti-spatter. This is anti-spatter nozzle shield. So I'm probably getting a little more spatter on there if I would've got just a anti-spatter. So I, you kind of spray this on here. And there's one thing you want. You don't want this wire to be so tight that you can't stop it with your finger. That's one thing I noticed that really kind of helped. So you want to hold like this and if, if you can't move it, that's, that's how you want. It'll still come through. You want to be able to stop it with your finger. So how in the F do you adjust how that's set up, you may ask. That's with this guy right here. If you see this comes up, you can see this guy put pressure on this other wheel that the motor's on. It comes down. You put this on here. And however tight this is on your wire is going to dictate how much force is continually put on that. And that's how you adjust that. So of course, you need one of these. And make sure your grounding is up. I'll look up what that is in a second. I just don't know what it's called. We're just gonna call it a grounder. And we'll just say your exhaust has to go in that section. 
Another thing too, you gotta make sure, since this is not the best of fillers devices, oops, you have to make sure your gap is as small as possible, else it's super easy to blow right through here. So at first, I know someone's gonna say something that I don't have gloves on, whatever, y'all will be okay. I'm just gonna put a little bit of this jazz on there. It'll kind of help. This is the wrong crap, but anyways. So I'm gonna put my helmet down, and we're gonna make a tack. All right, we got our first tack. I'm now gonna flip it over the other side. I'm gonna tack it right here. Tacking it right there. Uh-oh, see that? Right, fill that little hole in there. And then I'm gonna tack it in one other spot. Let's say right here, why not? See this has like a little lip right here. I'm gonna start from the low side and come on up. Just like so. And now, we have it tacked. And as you can see, this is why flux core pretty much blows for making anything look nice. Because it creates a lot of spatter. Look at that. The one spot that I put this shit actually has more spatter than the other ones. So we're not worried about this for right now. I'm just gonna use it for the tip. This to keep stuff from sticking to it. Really helps. Try it again. Yep, yeah, that's what it was. That's why I really gotta keep this clean. Nothing too, you don't want to have your hands just floating up here and you're trying to go in the same spot. You're never gonna be able to get a controlled angle controlled attack at your welding area you, you can see right here my hands down here i'm securing it so i have a lot of control and i can just do very slow movements right across and another thing i know a lot of you guys are going to want to do is you're going to want to hit this and go down really far but you can't really do that with this kind of welder and the reason why is because it'll get too hot and you're laying down the material and you'll punch a hole straight through. So you gotta do those little short attacks one at a time, clean it off each time. Like I said, that's the best way I found for this to work. Instead of starting right here, I'll start from this little dip. I don't know why it does that. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it does. Maybe someone who's more experienced can tell me why it does that crap. Uh-oh, put it back here. The small little sections at a time. You're just working your way around. That's why I have this right here, so that I can do this. And use it to prop shit up with. There we go, a little more than that. Like I said, you never wanna push it down, you wanna pull it down. Let me get my chintzy thing right there. There we go. Now I'm going to come right here. Had to reposition the camera for you guys. God dang it. Cleanliness.
Actually, I'm gonna leave that shit up there because it'll keep stuff from sticking to it. I'll just do it from the bottom here. Like I said, we're just working our way around. Don't let it get too hot. You can see I have a fan right here to keep those very toxic fumes from going up in your mask. If you don't do that, it'll give you like the worst freaking headache that you've ever had. Well, all right, so our finished garbage is now done. Let's clean it up and see how horrible it looks. Oh man, that looks like crap. But, you know, you know each spot is definitely well or good. So now it's time to make it look like this end and that's this one, the, the downsides of flux core. I mean, you can get a good weld, but it's damn sure not gonna be the most pretty weld, and especially on thin stuff like this. I've had thicker stuff where I can just hit and go back and forth, make a big solid pass. And if it has like that stuff from like, you know, you get the, a really thick metal from uh, Lowe's that has that kind of like anti-rust stuff on there, you don't get nearly as much as this stuff right here. But there's nothing on here to prevent all this spatter from sticking to it. So this is where the cleanup comes in. Uh, I think it's gonna rain on us. Hopefully it'll hold out long enough to just throw all this shit inside the garage. But when it comes to cleanup, I like to use the cutoff wheel. I mean, you're not sticking in there. The kind of stuff's coming off. I like to use this because I think it does a better job at getting in the crevices and doing this cleanup in a thick cutoff wheel. And so, for the more fine-tuned detail, some more Harbor Freight stuff. I'm just gonna use a Harbor Freight drill, nine bucks drill. Clean it up if you want, before you paint it. Some high temp paint. Or you can just leave it just like that. The choice is yours. Oh wait, I just found another method that works pretty good. Since you are talking about budget shit, maybe you're making something that you want to look so-so for your budget turbo build. So I guess you just do this to the parts. You don't want to look stupid ugly. I mean, it's all gonna look stupid ugly, but you at least won't want to punch yourself in the face when you pop your hood. Eh, not too bad. Well, that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I know when I first started out doing car stuff, I had a lot more time than money, but with enough time, enough practice, you can get, you know, pretty decent results for your exhaust or if you're making some budget turbo setup. Like I said, it does take time, but like I said before, all the budget DIY guys I know have a lot more time than money. Well, thank you guys for tuning in to the end of the video. Don't forget to subscribe. Till next time, peace.